QuickBooks Desktop 2023 Advanced Customer Payment or Unearned Revenue Method Number One. Let's do it within two its QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in QuickBooks Desktop, Get Great Guitars Practice File. We started up in a prior presentation, going through the setup process we do every time, maximizing the homepage to the gray area. In the view dropdown, we got the hide icon bar, open windows list checked off, open windows open on the left hand side. Reports drop down, company and financial. Let's open up the profit and loss, the P and the L. Range and changing, 01023 to 123. Customize it, fonts and numbers, change the font to 14. Okay, yes, okay. Let's do it again with the balance sheet. Reports drop down company and financial. This time the balance sheet standard, the other big financial report. Customize, range change, 01023 to 123123. Fonts numbers, change to 14. Okay, yes and okay that's the setup process that we do every time now this time let's jump on over to the home page we got a bit different of a scenario we want to be running we're looking at the revenue cycle we thought of three general ways the revenue cycle often works and now we're going to throw in like a fourth way that it might work in specific types of industries so remember you might have a very easy revenue cycle where basically you work on gig work or you get paid by YouTube or something. You wait till something clears the bank. You've recorded with a deposit form or possibly with the use of the bank feeds. That would be the easiest thing to do if you have that kind of, uh, of business to do that with. The second easiest way is to use a cash-based system. Notice what we just talked about is a step further from a cash-based system, in which case you're not really doing a full service cash-based accounting system, but instead relying on the bank to record the deposit. A full service cash-based system would be one, for example, if you had a cash register situation, like a food truck type of situation, and people are paying you at the point in time you give them the goods and services, and then you make the deposit. And then you got the full accrual system where you have to do the work first, like with, with an accounting office, a CPA firm, a legal firm, landscaping, for example, then you might issue the invoice, increase in accounts receivable, then receive the payment and then make the deposit. What if, however, you're in a situation where you get the money first? So now instead of invoicing them and then receiving the payment, you're gonna get the payment first. When might that happen? Certain industries, that's going to be the case like all the time. That's their business structure. So if you're in like a newspaper uh, business or selling or selling magazines, that's the traditional kind of uh, scenarios where this would be the case, then you get paid first and then you issue them the, the newspapers, right? So you do the work after you get paid. That's opposite to what traditionally happens in most businesses where you do the work first or at the same time and then get paid. So if you get, if you get paid first, then you, you could record it as revenue when you get paid, but that's kind of deceiving because you haven't really earned the revenue. So what you should do properly from an accounting standpoint is put it on the books as a liability, unearned revenue, because you owe something in the future for the money they gave you. You either owe them the money back or hopefully you do the work in the future, earning the money that they have already given you. So that's one scenario. Other businesses, they have like a, a situation where that might be part of their business. So if you have a rental company, for example, then you might have the, the last month's rent you might collect you know, upfront or security deposit is a similar situation. You've got the money, you haven't earned it and or you don't expect to hold on to it forever because when the when the when the last month comes up or when they leave 
then you might owe them the money back. Therefore, it's not revenue, but you got to record it as a, as a liability. That's similar to kind of unearned uh, revenue type of situation. Uh, also note that when we talk about like the example of a newspaper, many software companies have a similar example now because the subscription model is designed in a similar fashion. So you might say if someone pays you a year in advance for a, a subscription, you could record it as revenue at the point in time they give you the money, but you really haven't given them anything for that money they've given you. So from a full accrual service accounting system, you should record it as a, as a liability until you actually provide the service of them using the software or whatever, and that's when you should record uh, the revenue from an accrual standpoint. So another area that this might happen, and this would kind of fit into our scenario here, is where you're gonna be picking up a big job or you're gonna be purchasing something that is specifically for a client. It's custom to the client and you ask for a down payment up front before you proceed with the work to lock them in to completing the sale. So for example, our guitars, we might get a large down payment up front and then we're gonna buy the guitar custom for them. And then when we give them to guitar to them, then we can receive the rest of the payment at that point in time. So those are some general scenarios. Now, if I go to the balance sheet, logistically, how should this work? If you've ever worked kind of problems in accounting classes, courses, then traditionally what will happen is when you get paid, you're going to increase cash and the other side is going to be going to some kind of liability account called unearned revenue or deposit or something like that. And then when you earn the money, you're going to reduce the liability account and record the income, not when you receive the money, but when you completed the work. That's the traditional way that we want to see it. However, logistically, we run into some problems with software with relation to that, because notice if I have a liability down here called unearned revenue, the liabilities are usually related to vendors, not customers. So I don't have the same subledger down here to track a liability. What I, what I, the, the subledger when I deal with customers is usually related to accounts receivable. So logistically, there's a couple of ways we can do this in QuickBooks to make it easy on the bookkeeping side of things. One is to create a negative receivable. Now, again, that's not exactly proper for external financial reporting, but it does make it so that when I run a report, that's gonna be the reports drop down, customers and receivables, and I see the, uh, let's say the customer balance detail report, let's say, and let's customize it and make it a little bit larger so we can see it a bit better. Let's make it 12, okay? So then, then I'll be able to see it in here and I'll also be able to track it in the customer center, which is where I wanna look for any information about the customers. And we can also then at the period end, make period end adjustments to, to break out the, the liability component in like an adjusting entry process. That's the easiest thing to do. That's what we'll do here. The next step, we'll do a little bit more complex of a step in order to break out the liability as we do the data input. So bear with me if you wanna check out both, both of those methods. So this one, again, if you, I'm gonna go back to the, to the homepage. If you have accounting background, this is gonna feel a bit unnatural at first, but I hope logistically you can see why some companies will do this in practice. You will see this and then we'll see another way, another workaround that could work. And remember that your goal is when you're looking at it from an accounting standpoint, if you're not a bookkeeper, but you're an accountant, like an auditor, then you might not be taking into consideration the ease of the connection of the reports from a bookkeeping standpoint, which obviously if you're on the bookkeeping side of things and you're trying to contact the customers all the time, that's what your major concern is, as well as the creation of the financial statements. Our goal between the two of them is to try to make the bookkeeping as easy as possible and make the financial statements correct on an accrual basis typically, which might include adjusting entries that are gonna be necessary so that we can do the bookkeeping as easily as possible and then make periodic adjustments at the end of the period. Okay, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna assume that we got a payment. I'm gonna enter the payment before I enter the invoice. So we're gonna do this backwards. I'm gonna say receive payment and we're gonna say this is coming from Anderson. I'm gonna say Anderson, which is a customer we already set up. Note there's no invoices down here for Anderson. So I'm not gonna be able to tie it out to invoices, which is normally the use 
of the customer payment form. I'm just going to keep it cash for the purposes of the problem, say $300. We're going to say that this happened on 02-25-23, and it's going to go into undeposited funds, and there's no invoice that we're going to create. In. We're imagining we got the $300 for like an advanced payment on a guitar that we're going to give them in the future. So we can imagine they called us up. They said, hey, I want this particular guitar. I saw it. You remember we, I was in the shop before and it was like green one or whatever. Don't sell it. We'll say, well, we'll hold on to it. But that's a that's a popular guitar. Maybe you pay us now early. Right. And then they're going to give us money in advance in order to hold on to the guitar and possibly come in later for the rest of and pay for the rest of it. So we'll say, okay, we'll hold on to it for you if you give us the $300. So if I record this then, what's it gonna do? Well, it's gonna affect or decrease the receivable, but it's got no invoice to tie to, and therefore it's gonna apply like a credit or an, a payment that's gonna be able to match up against the future invoice. And then the other side's gonna go to undeposited funds. So you have no rec uh, record the new transaction, do you want to record it now? You have you have not recorded. I'm going to say yes. And then a credit for the overpayment will remain on the customer's account. You can click print credit memo to save the transaction and print a credit memo. Click OK to save the transaction or click cancel to go back. I'm going to say OK. I want the credit there. And then I'm going to go to the balance sheet. Notice in the balance sheet in the accounts receivable, it didn't make accounts receivable negative because this is just one item, but it did lower the accounts receivable and it's got no other invoice to match out to. I can see that more clearly on the sub ledger. If I close this out and I go to the customer balance detail and I look at Mr. Anderson, notice this ties out to this, this ties out to that, this 300 was input and it's got nothing to tie out to. There's no invoice to tie it out to and I have a negative balance in Anderson. That's not right technically from a financial statement standpoint because that means it's a liability. If, if I owe Anderson money or the guitar, then it should be a liability of unearned revenue or something like that. So what's this doing? It's understating the accounts receivable. The accounts receivable should be higher by the $300 the total down here, 19,511.50, is actually understated, but it still matches what I have here. What should happen is this should be higher by the 300, and then I should have a liability down here, unearned revenue or something like that, for 300. But again, I can't really track the unearned revenue by customer, which is what I want to do from a bookkeeping standpoint. If I go back to the home page, I can also go to the customer center here, here, or by going to the customer drop down, customer center and I can go to Mr. Anderson, and I can see in here then uh, the transaction and the $300 payment that we have that's not tied out to anything. And if Mr. Anderson called me and tracked this, and I'm trying to figure out what happened, I want to see this data in the customer area. That's why this works you know, fairly nicely. Uh, all right, so that's, and then what's gonna happen in the future is of course, they're gonna, we're gonna get the guitar and then we will sell the guitar to them with an invoice. But we'll do that in a future presentation. Let's add an, a couple other ones and we're imagine another person comes in, a customer comes in, Eric Music, and says, hey, I heard you were you know, holding on to some guitars for my good buddy, Mr. Anderson. I would like that blue guitar or whatever. So hold on to that. I only have $200 right now. And we're like, okay, you give us the 200, we'll hold, we'll, we won't sell it, that's a hot seller but we'll hold on to it for you if you give us 200 right now. So we're gonna do the same thing. This will get make a negative account or amount for Eric Music that we'll have to tie to the invoice. I'm gonna X out to close it and say yes, and then okay. And then let's do one more and we'll say receive payment. One other person comes in, this become, people are saying this is good deal here. I want, this is 250, Sam the guitar man, same thing. We're going to say it's going to give us 250 for another guitar. Uh, all right. And so we haven't given them the guitar. They're going to they're going to come back and get it later. So I'm going to say yes. OK, so we've got these three advanced payments. So now if I go into the balance sheet again and I go into the accounts receivable, now you've got these three people that gave us payments. They don't tie out to anything in terms of the invoice. I can see that more clearly by going to the customer balance detail report where now we had Anderson with this, Eric Music now has this negative 200, 
and we have Sam the Guitar Man at the negative 250. So what's going to happen in the future is once we invoice the client, then the invoice will match out and we can apply, say, the 250 to the invoice and everything will be fine. Notice this is only, in other words, a timing difference. However, if we cro crossed over a reporting period at the end of the month or the end of the year, then to be accurate on an accrual standpoint, we would want to go through here and say, okay, I'm going to take all these negative balances and make an adjusting entry to increase the accounts pay the accounts receivable to the proper balance and then increase the liability. So in other words, logistically, it works well. It's only a timing difference. It'll work itself out fine. I can track everything from a bookkeeping standpoint in the customer section, which is what I want to do from the bookkeeping standpoint. And if it hasn't reversed itself by the point we report the financial statements into the month, into the year, then we could just do an adjusting entry. So we want to be notifying what we are doing to the accountant so that they can make any kind of period end adjustments to properly break out the AR versus the liability. So that would be the concept of doing this method of it. So let's go back to the balance sheet and the other side is going into undeposited funds for the 750 at this point. So let's go ahead and just make that deposit, taking it out of undeposited funds, putting it into the checking account, homepage, so this undeposit, this deposit area is working just like it normally would if we did the invoice first and then the receive payment. We now have the receive payment going into undeposited funds. Those That number three represents the three amounts that we're going to imagine we go to the bank and deposit in one group sum. Going in there, I'm going to check all of them off. There they are. I'm going to say, OK, so the total deposit is going to go into the checking account at 750. It's going to decrease the undeposited funds by each of these individual amounts, bringing it to zero. Let's save it and close it and check it out. Is the date right? I think that's the right date. Let's keep it there. Yeah. OK, so I'm going to go back to the balance sheet and then in the checking account, double clicking on the checking, checking out the checking. We've got the deposit 750 on that one lump sum line item. And then the undeposited funds is gone. If I want to see it so I can drill down on it, I can customize. I can go to the advanced stuff. I'm going advanced here, people. Watch out. Active, active cells. Okay. So then undeposited funds, I can drill down on that. And so there we have it. So then it takes these three out, even though they were the same one deposit, because there were three components to it so that we can tick and tie in the undeposited funds, the increases and the decreases. So that's where we'll stop it here. Uh, next time, then of course, we'll make some invoices to see to see how the undeposited funds will, will then uh, match to the invoice. And uh, at the end of the, of the month, we'll do some adjusting entries to show you how you might make an adjustment to correct the, any accounts receivable that hasn't, hasn't completed the cycle. We haven't invoiced for the deposits yet uh, and recording the unearned revenue. So we'll do adjusting entries and reversing entries during that time so you can see how the whole process works in this format. And then next time, we'll also take a look at a different way that you might uh, record the unearned revenue. So let's just open up a trial balance to see where we stand now and we'll just check our numbers. So we're going to go from 010123 to 123. I'll customize it. I'll bring the font up to 16 this time, up a notch to 16. It's getting a long trial balance. We should go, maybe I shouldn't go to 16 anymore. But in any case, you can see where we stand. If anything's uh, not tying out, you can change the date range to see if it's a date issue, drill down on it, make any changes necessary. We will look at a transaction detail report at the end of this month of data input, which will further allow us to check and hone down our numbers.